Hello and welcome to this video on factorizing. Before we get started, it's probably worth you having watched the two videos on factors and also on expanding brackets because that will be referred back to during the course of this video. So let's get started. On the left hand side in the blue, I've written down some factorized expressions and on the right hand side in the red, I've written down their expanded versions. Typically, people tend to find that expanding is much easier, but actually factorizing and expanding are opposites of one another. So from the blue version, I expanded to get the red version and from the red version, I factorized to get back to the blue version. Now, there's obviously four different levels of difficulty question there and hopefully this video will be able to look at all of them. So let's get started. In this example, which is quite a difficult example, we've got 12a to the power 4, b to the power 3, c plus 30a squared, b to the power of 5. So I've just added in a little step-by-step -step guide, which we're going to talk through as we do this example. So to start off then, we're going to have a look and check the coefficients for their highest common factor, step number one. Coefficients just means the number that's being multiplied by the variables, the a's, the b's, the x's, whatever it might be, it's the number in front of the letters. So 12 and 30, which I've highlighted, their highest common factor is actually going to be 6. If I consider all of the factors of both of them, they've got a couple in common, but 6 is the highest common factor. So this is going to start to build the portion of my expression that lives outside the bracket. It's going to start with a 6. Then I'm going to move on to step 2. And what I'm going to do here is check any of the common variables, and variables is going to be the letters, for highest common factors. Now I can see that there are a's in both of these terms so if I have a look and consider what a to the power 4 actually is it's a times a times a times a and a squared is a times a. Now what's common to both is an a times another a. So I can actually take out, I can factorize out an a squared which is a times a, common to both. Now all I'm going to do, step three, is I repeat step two for any other common variables. Now I can see that b is common to both, so I go through exactly the same process. I know what b to the power three and b to the power five look like, and I say to myself, right, how many of those can I take out of both terms? And the answer is b cubed, or b to the power three. The final variable I've got is c. Now c is not common to both terms, and because it's not common to both terms, I'm going to skip it which moves us on to step four. I'm going to use the multiplication to construct what goes on inside the bracket. So I can see from the first bit I've got 6a squared and b to the power 3 and I need that to become 12a to the power 4 b cubed c. So what do I need to times by the 6 to create the 12? What do I need to times by the a squared to make the a to the power 4? Do I need to times the b cubed by anything and how do I create that c? So my bracket goes in and hopefully you can see that 6 times 2 gives me the 12. a squared times a squared gives me a to the power 4. b to the power 3 is already there, so it doesn't need to be a part of that term. And I do need to include the c so that that gets created. Exactly the same now for the next term. I'm going to ask myself the same questions. How do I make the 30? How do I make the a squared? And how do I make the b to the power 5? And I need to multiply my term outside the bracket by 5 to make the 30. The a squared is already present and I need to include a b squared term to combine with the b cubed term to make an overall b to the power of 5. I can double check my bracket by expanding this one back out and hopefully I should arrive back where I started from. Okay, your turn. Now you're going to look at these questions and think they look slightly different to what we've just previously done and you're absolutely right they do but follow through the steps and you will be fine on these. Remember, these are the easier examples, way easier than the example we just looked at. Pause the video here, hit play when you're ready to have a look at some answers. Okay, so in the first one, if we go through step number one, the highest common factor of the coefficients, and the coefficients here are five, and we've got this number floating out in the end of 10. Highest common factor is five, so step one is done at this point. Are there any common variables? Remember, these are the letters. Well, I can see that x appears in this term, but doesn't appear in this term. So actually, step two is a no. There are no common variables. There's no need to repeat step two. So I get now down to step number four. So I add my bracket in. What do I times by the five to make five x? Well, that's got to be x. What do I times by five to make positive 10? Well, it's got to be positive two. And that's that one factorized. The second one, exactly the same steps again. Highest common factor of 30 and 15 is 15. 
there are no common variables to this one so I would times 15 by 2 to make the 30 and 2a to make the 30a this one's always something that catches people out what do I times by 15 to make 15 now it can't be 0 it can't be nothing that's really important I times 15 by 1 to make 15 question number 3 5 and 7 so step number 1 5 and 7 don't have any highest common factors so actually I'm going to ignore those two and I'm going to move to step number 2 there are X's in both of them so I do have common variables so I can take an X outside the front of the bracket but in this example I cannot take any of the numbers out so my brackets go in what do I times by X to create 5 X squared well it would have to be a 5 X what would I times by X to make 7 X just a 7 in there the fourth question no coefficients whatsoever we can see so I move straight on to step number two there are X's common to both of these terms so again an X is going to come out the front what do I times by X to make X squared X and similarly to in question two when we asked ourselves how do I make the 15 what do I times by X to make X the answer is just one so that's what that one looks like fully factorized well done if you got all four of those correct there were some tricky ones in that okay on to some real nasty questions so on this one we're going to have lots of different variables we're going to have lots of different coefficients go through your steps you may need to repeat step two a couple of times pause the video here hit play when you're ready to see what the answers look like okay so in the first one my coefficients are 10 and 12 highest common factor of 10 and 12 is 2 I can see that I do have X's in both so I can take out an X from both terms add my brackets in what do I times by 2x to make 12x squared well it would have to be a 6 and an X what do I times by 2x to make 10x it would have to be a 5 question number two highest common factor of the coefficients 6 and 15 well highest common factor here is 3 and then if I move on I can see that I've got A's in both terms so I can take an A outside the front of the bracket and then if I repeat this step I can see I've got B cubed and B squared so the highest common factor there is a B squared I add in my brackets and I'm going to need a 2 to multiply by the 3 to create my 6 um, the A is already there I've got a B squared and I need that to turn into a B cubed so I need to add in one more power of B and then plus 5 will multiply by the 3 to make 15 again I've already got the A so I don't need to add anything there and I've actually already got the B squared so I'm just going to leave this one as 5 5 times 3 AB squared will make 15 AB squared question number 3 highest common factor of 8 and 10 is 2 and then I can see that I've got X's common to both and I can only take one X out of both terms I can see that Y's are common to both and I can take one Y out of both terms and I can see that I've got this Z term here but it's not in the first term so I have to leave that one alone I cannot take it out as being common to both so my brackets go in and I'm going to times the 2 by 4 to make 8 the X is going to multiply by another X to make X squared and the Y is already present so I move on to the next term I'm going to times the 2 by 5 to create the 10 the X I've already got I need to make a Y cubed and I've got a Y here at the front so actually I'm going to need to add in a Y squared and if you remember this Z term you can't forget about it it doesn't exist in this front part so I need to add it in at the very end so that it gets included question number four the highest common factor of 15 and 8 is 3 so that's going to come out of this one a to the power 3 and a highest common factor is just an a b squared and b cubed highest common factor is b squared my brackets get added in at this point and I'm just going to fill this thing out so the 5 will multiply by the 3 to make 15 I'm going to need an a squared which will combine with the a to make a cubed and the b squared is already present so that term should be fine then I'm going to multiply 3 by 6 to make my 18 the a is already there I've got a b squared so I need to add in just a single power of b to create the b cubed well done if you got all of those correct they were pretty nasty and now we're on to the beast if you can factorize this with no problems I am confident you can factorize pretty much anything pause the video here 
have a go at the beast question. If you dare, hit play when you're ready to see what the answer looks like. Okay, yikes, this one looks pretty nasty. So we've got a 12, we've got a nine, and we've got a minus 18 here. Just because there are three terms to this expression doesn't make any difference. My rules are still gonna apply. So the highest common factor of 12, nine, and 18 is three. So I'm gonna have a three living outside my bracket. Then I'm gonna look at the x's. So I've got x to the four, x to the three, and x to the seven. So I can take x's out of every single term there. Here I've got x to the four, here x to the three, here x to the seven. So the maximum amount I can take out of each term is x to the power of three. Then I'm gonna look at my next variable, y squared, y cubed, and just a single y. So the most number of y's I can take out of all three terms is just one power of y there. Then I'm gonna look at the z's, and I've got z to the five, z to the 6 and z to the 4. So the maximum power of z I can take out is z to the power of 4. So I'm pretty confident at this point that's what the front of my bracket is going to look like. So I'm going to add in some brackets. There's a lot to this, so I'm going to space them out quite well. Okay, I times the 3 by a 4. That will make the 12. The x to the power 3 needs to be timed by a single power of x to make x to the power 4. The y needs to be paired with another y to make y squared and the z to the power 4 needs to multiply by a single power of z to make z to the power 5. Moving on to the next term I'm going to multiply my 3 here by another 3 to make this 9. The x to the power 3 I've already got so I'm going to leave that. I need to have y cubed in this term. I've already got y to the power 1 so I need to add in y squared and I need to create z to the power 6. I have z to the power 4, so I'm going to need to include a z squared. Moving on to the next term, I'm going to multiply 3 by negative 6 to make this negative 18 term I've got here. To turn my x to the power 3 into x to the power of 7, I'm going to need x to the power of 4. The y I already have outside the front, so I don't need to worry about this. And the same with the z to the power 4, I've already got that outside the front, so I don't need to worry about that one. So this is what the answer to the beast question looks like. Well done if you got that one right, that one's pretty taxing. Okay, so just to finish off, a quick recap of this one. Remember, factorizing and expanding are inverses of one another. If I factorize to get to an answer, I can expand to get back to the question and vice versa. Always check your answer expands back to match the original question. Everybody, myself included, finds expanding easier. So once you've factorized and got an answer that you think is correct, expand it and see if it gets you back to where you started from. If it does, you're home free. And follow the steps carefully. So make sure you learn all of these steps and get yourself used to that pattern. Okay, thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.